Hey everybody, thank you so much for the reception for my last video on Kuma Yushi's 1v2 against Ruler and 369. A lot of people really liked the video and I got a lot of good feedback from it. I've decided to do another video, once again highlighting another T1 game, but then this time against LNG, the series last week where they convincingly 3 0 them. That's when they started to show their dominance in Worlds 2023. So I'm going to go over a play that happened around the Rift Hero at the 8 minute mark to give a bit of context. He won is super notorious for wanting to start Rift fights, even from last year's world. And ever since they caught this starting 5 that they have now, they've been a super heavy Rift Hero team where as soon as it spawns, they like to group as many members as they can and try to contest Rift Hero, try to contest the fight because they know if they go for a fight, then they can win out of 5v5 just purely off of mechanics from T1. And so to give a little bit of background to what's happening right now, before we start this clip, we're going to go back two minutes to where Zeus, he got ganked by Zika and Tarzan in a 1v2 situation. All of them had to use Flash, but then securing the first blood for LNG side and on to the Gwen. If we look at bot wave, we can see that Karia and Kumuyushi, even though they are known to rotate for the Rift Hero as soon as it spawns, they're staying bot lane and they're constantly pressuring bot lane, not pushing, not shoving the wave, but then keeping it right in front of the turret, making sure that they're denying CS on Gala, and also making sure that they have vision of Hong. At the 7.45 minute mark, Zeus, he starts backing, he starts channeling his recall. As soon as he gets back, he buys as many items as he can with the gold that he has, and he starts walking to Rift immediately. Baker as well, he also backed at a very similar timing to make sure that he can buy as many items as he can before walking immediately to Rift Hero. Both of them disregarding what kind of state their lane is in, they back immediately and start walking towards Rift. Now we're going to jump back to the first initial frame that I started the video at. But unlike last time where I let the clip play, I'm going to pause in between key pivotal moments, explain what's happening, and also try to let you guys know what T1's thinking at this exact moment. So I'm going to pause right here. What happened so far? Owner started the Rift Herald. What Wolf said just now? is that owner started the Rift Herald, but then fighting here looks a little iffy. Now the reason why it's a little iffy is because there is no rotation from the bot lane to the Rift Herald. There's no advantage on T1 side. It's going to be a straight 3v3 if LNG decide to contest for this because they see no movement from T1's bot lane. But what we're going to soon see is a masterpiece of a plan that T1 has orchestrated for this Rift Herald fight. I'm also going to address what the players are currently thinking their awareness of what's happening and then the movement the immediate reaction to what follows so i'm going to resume the clip again so what wolf just said is that Aatrox disregarded his lane state and moved immediately to Rift. But then T1's bot lane isn't rotating yet. As you saw on the map, there were tons of blue pings around the Rift Herald signaling that people are going to rotate. I can assure you that one of those pings is Hong right now. If you look at the minimap, Hong is slowly starting to rotate. But then once I play the clip, you're going to see that while LNG is grouping for this Rift Herald fight, T1 does not move an inch. And that makes Hong do a little dance in the jungle. So right before I play this play, did you guys see Hong's movement in the jungle? He was walking back and forth and is ultimately going to decide to stay bot lane because he knows that Gumayushi and Kiria can easily dive Gala or at most deny him so much CS just purely from Senna's auto attack range compared to Kaisa's auto attack range. And so Hong does his little dance and ultimately decides to stay. But what we see here is complete awareness. T1, they've been looking at Zika and Tarzan in the top side and they haven't seen Scout in mid lane for a while. This bottom entry here into the Rift River is his most likely entry. If Scout were have gone to the left side, then there's less of a potential for a sneak attack Shurima shuffle into the two-man LNG squad on the top side. But in case Scout did come from the entry that T1 anticipated, then T1 has a ward and react as soon as possible. And as soon as Scout is spotted on this ward by Faker and Owner, Faker and Owner react with 
inhumane reactions. Now, that was crazy. Baker and owner, they reacted to Scout shuffling in and immediately walked backwards. Owner had his route WE buff, which gave him a little bit of movement speed, but Faker, he completely outplayed Scout in this situation. Faker, he did not have a speed buff on Oriana. All he had was a shield on him, and he just walked out without fear, which then led to owner EQ comboing Tarzan into Zeus's second Q into Faker's ultimate, which left Tarzan obsolete. But even if Faker and owner got hit by that Chirima shuffle, I feel like there's a big chance that they still win out. Because if you look at the bottom right, this wasn't a 3v3 fight. This, in essence, was a 5v3 fight in favor for T1. Why? Even though T1's bot lane didn't rotate, they still had assistance from them, from Senna's ultimate, which damages the enemy, which also shields your teammates. Let's say that Senna's ultimate shields them for 100 each and damages them for 75 each. That's 525 shielding plus damage done just from Senna's ultimate. E1, they orchestrated this fight perfectly. They knew that even without the rotation from the bot lane, they were still able to assist in the Rift Herald fight while still denying Gala XP. If you look at the difference in bot lane, it's 2 level 7s versus 1 level 6 and 1 level 5. Bot lane is over, and now they just added more fuel to the fire at this Rift Herald fight. Baker and an owner had the awareness to know that Scout was MIA and knew that he could go for a gauge at any given opportunity, and Baker and owner completely dodged it. Zeus, he barely takes any damage because all the damage and all the focus actually went on to Tarzan while also hitting Zika too. And this is because T1, they were aware that Scout would come in at any given moment. And so even though they didn't see him for a while, as soon as they had vision of him, they knew what he was going to do and reacted as fast as possible. And with that rift, they eventually snowballed the game entirely with another play onto mid and the solo kill by Zeus in the top lane. This game was sealed. Because Zekka and Tarzan, especially Tarzan, used their flashes for that 6 minute gank, Tarzan did not have an escape. But then even with the flash, I feel like he would have gotten outplayed anyways. Because the chain CC that was done by T1 was perfect. And I'm a T1 glazer, so I'm saying perfect, but mad. It was beautiful to witness. Once again, he won 3-0. Don't take it as a curse, take it as a foresight.